Okay, we're getting back to work today on replacing the wood on the transom of this 1966 StarCraft Jupiter. We finished removing the old wood yesterday and ran to Lowe's today to buy the new plywood. Now we've just got to cut it to the right size, laminate it together, and install it in the boat after it's painted and sealed and everything. Okay, I gave up on using the original wood from the transom as a template. Um, every time I got a measurement, since it's so mushy, it came up a quarter inch this way, a quarter inch that way. That's just not going to cut it. So I just measured the bottom width, measured the top width, and then measured the height on the inside. And transferred it over to my three quarter inch plywood. And I'm basically just cutting out two big rectangles. Hi Samantha. There's one right there already cut out. And I'm going to cut out the other one in just a minute. This is the maximum height and the maximum width dimensions. And then later I will mark the center of it. And the measurement that I got at the bottom of the transom, I'll just measure that width and center it on that center line. And then I'll just, wherever it comes out to, I'll just measure from that mark up to my corner line. And that'll give me the exact angle of the hull. And I should be able just to take both of these boards when they're finished and screw them together temporarily, drop them down into the transom, and mark out the outline of the aluminum and where all the holes are going to be. That's just a lot easier doing it this way than using this rotten mush as a template. So I'm going to go ahead and get this other one cut out and get started on those uh, bottom marks and get my angles marked out. I've marked center on this board here and then basically centered my bottom measurement on it and marked it on each end, which on here was three and a half inches from the end. So on the other board, I didn't have to measure center, I just measured three and a half inches from the end. But made both my marks, then put a straight edge from this mark to this corner, and it gives me the uh, angle of the hull. Or pretty close. I mean, if I have to, I can take the belt sander and shave both sides down slightly once I have uh, these two pieces of three quarter inch um, laminated together. But I'm going to go ahead and cut this out real quick and set them down in the hole and see how it looks before I get to work uh, adhering the two boards together. I went ahead and test fit the first piece that I cut just to make sure that those angles were right before I go messing up two of them. And sure enough, it fit absolutely perfect. Of course, the other side's a little high because there's still a little bit of trash uh, down at the bottom of that channel I've got to clean out. But And obviously, I'll be trimming this down. But that'll be after both pieces are together. I'll work on that, marking everything, and I'll mark all these holes and stuff, but that's, you know, just after I screw them together, not after I glue them together, but, yeah, it's, it's easier doing it this way than trying to use the old ones as a template. I'm glad I didn't even try. 
Look at that. There it is. I think that came out pretty good. I got the two pieces just clamped together just to see how they line up. I know I'll have to smooth the edges and get them you know, perfect and everything with a belt sander later, but I just wanted to see how the thickness came out. But all the main cuts are finished. Obviously, once we set it in there again, we'll trace out the pattern, you know, with the curve and everything with the aluminum. Um, that shouldn't be too difficult. And also, go ahead and pre-drill all the uh, holes. But as you can see, we've got our inch and a half thickness. And I don't have it clamped tight right now. I just did it just so it would sit up and I could kind of look at it. But it is finally starting to look like a uh, boat transom again. First time doing this, not going to be the last. I know a lot of people, when they do this, they'll say, oh, you should have used treated. Well, you hear everybody saying that the treated will mess up the aluminum and the marine grade as well. Um, what was in there originally wasn't treated. It was only painted on the exposed areas and it lasted a long time. And This isn't that hard to do if I have to do it again in 10 years. Oh well, that's fine. It doesn't uh, really take that much work. It's just learning how to do it the first time. Uh, second time will take probably half the amount of time to complete. But I'm going to get started again on it tomorrow. It's tomorrow now, and we're getting back to work on this transom. Um, first thing we wanted to do was screw the boards together and then set it down in the boat and we were going to mark all these holes and everything so we could just drill out all the holes in the wood before we glue them together. But before drilling the holes we wanted to make sure since we are doing an engine swap that the mounting locations for the 1966 Evinrude Sport 4 were the same as our 1985 Johnson 115 V4. And of course the Evinrude does not have really any adjustment in the mounting location at all. It's uh, 13 inches wide here and I think it was 10 inches wide across here but it was you know basically stuck at eight and I think it was eight and a half inches high and the width was perfect with the Johnson and height on these is fine because the Johnson the newer ones are adjustable so we are going to be able to drill the holes in the exact same location. That makes life a whole lot easier. I'm about to screw the two pieces of plywood together, but so that I don't put the screws where I'm going to be drilling holes later, I went ahead and set the old wood from the transom on top of the new wood. And also gave me a chance to check out to see if my measurements were right. So this is actually the first time comparing the two. And it is pretty damn good. Uh, but I marked out, you know, the, the most important holes, like the drain holes and the ones for the motor mount. And the other drain hole. I didn't mark the ones for the handles and stuff like that just yet. Um, this is just so I won't put screws in the wrong spots just that'll be in my way of drilling later 
But for the small stuff, I mean, I can always remove a screw and just use the same hole. It won't be a big deal. So I'm going to go ahead and screw these uh, two pieces of plywood together and um, sand the edges a little bit and test fit it in the boat and then mark the holes using the aluminum as a template. Okay, I've got the two pieces of plywood um, screwed together. And I went ahead and took the belt sander on the bottom and on the two sides so that it would seat in here all the way. And of course, I, I probably should have left the height. I mean, I measured off the other one and I measured the depth from the bottom up to here. And I, and I came up with 19 and a half, but the outside measurement came up to 19 and three quarters. And I don't know, I probably should have done this board at 19 and three quarters and this one at 19 and a half and then maybe level it off. But I don't really see where that's going to matter too much. I'm going to go ahead and trace out this line here all the way across. Go ahead and mark all of the holes. Everything that was drilled into the old one. Everything's going back in the same places. Um, then I'll go ahead and I'll cut out this extra piece here and drill all the holes. There it is on the inside. I think it looks pretty good. And I had already marked a line of how much needed to be cut because from the bottom of that channel to um, the top of the old one it's exactly 12 inches. I marked that on here so that when I trace everything um, I should be cutting it right on that line for a majority of it and hopefully I'll get a, a nice straight edge but that little top cap can cover I don't know, up, up to about a half inch of screw ups, but l l let's not try to make it that bad. I got all the holes marked where they're going to be drilled on the outside, and I was working on these ones here on the inside, because I was just going to drill a bunch of, you know, small pilot holes just to make it easier to put the original screws with the horrible flathead tip back in and when I got to this point right here I realized I should do something different I know originally it was flat across because this was really close to this bracket but I'm gonna raise it up in the center and let me show you what that is I mean, it may have been raised up a little bit in the center, but for the most part, it appeared flat. If you can see, this line right now is just sitting flat across. It may be a little bit sagged down in the middle. And that line right there is where I'm going to raise it up to. Because as you can see, the drain holes are going to be one here and one over here but with it just flat it's just gonna drain as the water sloshes back and forth but if I raise that up it slopes it down to those drain holes and it'll help it drain faster so what I'm gonna do to hold it up onto that mark just for right now is I'm going to raise this up and then I'm going to put this screw just under the edge. I mean, I'm barely going to thread it into the wood. It's just to hold that up while I mark all those holes. Then later, when I install this permanently, um, I can just hold it up, start a screw into one of these pre-drilled holes, and it'll stay where I need it. But 
Uh, just just a something a little extra. I just decided to do at the last minute. Hopefully it'll work out. Look, the transom's complete. It's all finished. Now we just got to build a boat around it. Okay, the transom is completely cut out, sanded. Uh, all the holes are drilled. And it is ready to glue the two pieces of plywood together and let it dry overnight. Somebody stole the transom and replaced it with a dog. A horrible dog at that that wants the ball. And the transom is in the boat just to double check how it fits and how the holes came out. Drain holes are good. I think every hole is right on the money. And we went ahead and sanded this smooth. I know it's low on one end, but we've got to put rivets through here to hold the end caps on anyway. So that works out. And same thing on this end. Check that out. That is looking so much better. There it is from the inside. All right, now we're going to pull it back out of here and glue the two pieces together. I went ahead and uh, did a little extra step. I uh, had a extra piece of half inch plywood and just took my three quarter and laid it on top, marked everything out, drilled all the holes. I didn't drill the drain holes all the way through, I just drilled about two or three layers with the uh, paddle bit. I can drill them the rest of the way through after I set it on the uh, three quarter inch. If I ever have to make another transom, we're just going to keep this one in the attic. So when it's time to replace the transom again in the StarCraft, this one should be okay and give us a good clean template and save us a lot of time. Okay, I probably should have filmed it, but it was kind of a fast-paced step. Um, I've already got everything glued together and clamped down. I basically used up two tubes of this Loctite uh, PL Premium Polyurethane Construction Adhesive and spread it evenly across the whole thing with this trowel. I used a little ridge side and it worked out pretty good. And then I just couple extra pieces of uh, three quarter from where I cut off on the top of the transom. I had made them into little plates. I already drilled the holes and stuff to run these bolts through and used them to clamp down the two pieces as you can see here. And I wish I had more of the C clamps but I don't so I just basically moved them around the perimeter and those screws that I had pre-drilled to um, screw this thing into the boat where it's got that little flange at the bottom and also for where the splash well mounts to it I put some screws in some of these holes to hold it together and put bolts through what holes I could and then just after I screwed those in place then I moved the C-clamps around where they were needed and it's a little messy right now but I'll just wait until this stuff dries and take the belt sander to it and smooth the edges out. I mean I kind of scraped off some of the excess but it's not that pretty right now. And I know I'll have to run the paddle bit through some of these holes again but at least they're there. Now to let it dry for a day or so. It's supposed to rain tomorrow so it'll probably dry all day tomorrow. Then we can clean up the edges and 
throw some paint on it and begin the installation.